Recently, I've noticed more and more astrophotography YouTube channels springing up. This is a fantastic thing because YouTube is a wonderful platform where we can all share our experiences in the hobby and teach. So this is a good thing. Having a YouTube channel is a great hobby for your hobby, but it is a lot of work. Now, if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel for your astrophotography journey, like I did, like Trevor, Chuck, etc., all these people did, then I'm here to share a few experiences I had, which I wish I knew earlier when I started. And also I brought some friends along to help join me in this. Maybe you've heard of them. I'm going to start everything off with one thing I think is quite important to get into your head straight away. Don't pursue perfection. All right. Unless you formerly been a video editor or a camera operator or a storyteller or anything like that, then just understand that making videos, it's a skill, just like astrophotography is. You may be tempted right at the start to film and film and film and edit and edit and edit your video to death because you're trying to get it perfect. Don't worry about it. Just start publishing videos. I mean, don't upload just for the sake of uploading it, but don't sit there for hours and hours and hours trying to fine tune your video to make it absolutely perfect. Whenever you watch other YouTubers, then you need to know how long have they been in the game? Look at their earlier videos, not their modern videos, because you look at the earlier videos, you'll see the difference in their quality in editing as well. So don't edit to death. Don't pursue perfection straight from the start. Get some videos out and start growing. Hey Rosine, thanks for having me on your video. For those that don't know me, my name is Nick and I've run my own channel called Astro Exploring. The best advice that I could give to anybody starting a new YouTube channel is also the same advice I would give to anybody starting the hobby of astrophotography. Start with the equipment that you have. I film all of my videos even now over a year later on my smartphone. My phone can record in 4K at 60 frames per second and if I wanted to get that in a separate camera I'd have to spend quite a lot of money and so I still record all of my videos with my smartphone. The second piece of advice that I would give is that audio is much more important than the quality of the video. As I've already said everybody's got a smartphone now they're all these days capable of recording in full HD. The thing that you'll want to upgrade before you upgrade your camera or any sort of professional lighting is your audio. This microphone that you see here is the microphone I use in all my videos and it costs less than £20 on Amazon. You don't have to go out and buy the most expensive gear straight away. I've been using this microphone for over a year now and it's served me pretty well so far. And lastly, I just want to finish with have fun, enjoy it. We create content because we enjoy creating it and we enjoy helping others. So just have fun with it. Hey there. So something that we wish that we knew before we started on YouTube is uh, posting regularly. Consistency is key. Yes, on our first year we posted maybe once every three or four months. Uh, but once we started posting every single week, we had more comments, more shares, more likes. So if you plan to start YouTube, uh, do your best to post regular content over time. And once again, consistency is key. What's going on everybody? Aaron here with AV Astronomy. So, Ruse came to me and asked what I would think would be one of the best things I could recommend for a new YouTuber looking to do an astrophotography channel. And personally, I think just being yourself, being original, is one of the most important things you can do. Don't lose grasp of who you are. Keep your personality into the videos that you create. Don't worry too much about what everyone else is doing and just put your own personal spin, your own flair on it. Make it your own. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Because I'm telling you, this thing's a journey, and if you want to do it for the long run, you, you got to have fun doing it, and you're only going to have fun doing it if you're doing it your way. So that's my advice to you. And as always, guys, keep on looking up, keep on seeking. Till next time, God bless. Take care. Another thing to consider that I wish I drilled into my head when I started was setting expectations. The same way as when you began astrophotography and you were looking at someone else's picture and you're like, whoa, that's amazing. How did they take that photo? What equipment do they have? That's, I really want to take a photo like that. And then your first few photos probably aren't like that. YouTube is the same thing. You need to set your expectations accordingly. Real talk here. YouTube is a labor of love. It takes a long time. You're probably up. You might stay up until one or two o'clock in the night, in the morning, editing a video. 
And, you know, we've all had it happen. Any one of us YouTubers who you'd like to watch, we've all had it. We release a video and it doesn't do nearly as good as we're hoping. It flops. The thing is, setting your expectations accordingly will help you stop being disheartened if or rather when that happens. You just pick yourself up, you go on with the next video and you carry on. You take it in your stride, you carry on learning. Unscripted videos are harder to edit. They don't always have a logical progression of ideas and they can jump around and sometimes even feel disjointed. When you're scripting, you should use bullet points to map out your ideas. The bullet points will help you keep your video on track. Well, you start by recording each bullet point as its own separate clip, but you keep rolling if you make a mistake and you keep going until you get it right. Just keep going, but give yourself like a five second pause between when you screwed up and when you're about to start over on the bullet point. Ruzine should have a download link here in his description with the scripting template that I use. When you're editing, load all of your video clips to the timeline in numerical order. Go to the end of each clip and scrub back towards the beginning. You're looking for that final five to 10 second pause. When you find it, trim everything in front of it. And what you're gonna be left with is only the final good takes. Astrophotography is already a very challenging hobby without adding filmmaking into the mix. And I have one tip I'd like to share with you guys, which is gonna make managing your rig and your filmmaking a whole lot easier. So instead of doing a one-to-one -one talk to the camera like this when you're outside, you could maybe shoot some B-roll shots of your rig, of your mount slewing, or screen captures of Stellarium to show the DSO that you're imaging. This means your eyes don't have to be set on the camera all at once, and you can keep an eye on how the setup is running at the same time. Then when you come inside, you can easily do a voiceover of the footage you shot outside and talk your audience through what you were doing at the time. As you progress and get more confident with your rig, you maybe can add some clips of you speaking outside as well about what's going on, but I've been in YouTube for two years now and I still find it really difficult to multitask. I hope this helps guys and I really, really am looking forward to seeing what you produce. Hey, I'm Quinn the Lazy Geek. So what did I wish I had known before starting an astrophotography channel? I wish I had known people would actually listen to me. You know, I started uh, very lightheartedly giving little tips and tricks and uh, how to use me now, that kind of stuff. And then people actually listened to me and used my videos as advice as hard to build their setups as hard to make purchasing decisions as hard to use their money as hard to do things as hard to argue on forums i've seen places where people wrote like hey quiv said this or quiv said that and like no no don't no i am not a reference and that's actually it's super scary it's a lot of responsibility i feel like really 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 like worried whenever i publish a video that what i'm saying is actually accurate and uh, yeah, sometimes I have sleepless night about this. You guys trust me too much. Why? <laughs> so yeah, that's, uh, that has been the thing that I wish I had known before starting a YouTube video. The, the amount of responsibility that you have as a YouTuber with people watching you and, and taking your advice and putting it in practice, you know, you have to be able to actually you know, trust in what you're preaching and apply what you're preaching, which is what I try to do as much as possible, but it is a lot of pressure. And that's pretty much it. I mean, tons of other stuff, but that's the thing I wanted to mention. Hi there, it's Chris from DIY Astro. How are you doing? I've been making weekly videos for YouTube for possibly about two and a half years now. One thing I kind of wish I'd known from the start was just how multifaceted and addictive making YouTube videos can be. You know, if you've got a lot of family and friends and work commitments and other hobbies, definitely think beforehand how this addiction can fit in in the scheme of things because you may well find that you start to do some of the following. Turning your side of the bedroom into a makeshift recording studio. Spending arguably too much time researching cameras with flippy screens and good audio inputs. Obsessing over YouTube analytics and software subscriptions in the hope of improving your content. And finally, on occasion you'll become so absorbed in video editing, you'll often forget to put important things first. What are you doing man? We've got to get to the bunker, the meteorite's going to hit any moment. Come on now! Just about to render my video, just hold on a moment.
G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here, YouTuber and astrophotographer. Ruz wanted me to talk to the niche within the niche, which is YouTubers who also do astronomy. And I wanted to share my advice with you surrounding sponsorship and money. At some point, a sponsor will approach you and it's very tempting to take that sweet, sweet money. And if you decide to work closely with the sponsor, you need to make sure that you disclose your relationship, otherwise people will lose trust in the reviews that you're doing. So if a particular brand has helped you in any way with your videos, make sure you disclose that relationship. Use your own money, still buy the actual stuff that you want. That way people can trust what you're saying about the products. At the end of the day, it's all about authenticity and trust. So you need to ensure that you're not being disingenuous with the way you present information. You'll know when you've hit that sweet spot. Hey everyone, Trevor from Astro Backyard here. And uh, I feel like I do have some tips for you for starting an astrophotography YouTube channel. I started my channel about six years ago and I've learned a lot of things the hard way through trial and error. And uh, it's been a labor of love, that's for sure though. I absolutely am so proud of what I've done over the years and the amount of people I've reached. And you should be too very excited about the opportunity that YouTube gives you to reach so many people. It's really an amazing thing. In terms of a tip that I can give you is that I've heard a lot of people say that, uh, you know, it's important to be consistent and to upload regularly, you know, whether it's that video a week or even two videos a week. I don't believe in that. I think that each video should have a lot of value and just be your best work, every video if possible, just your absolute best work, even if there's big three week gaps between uploads because what we're essentially asking people for is the most precious thing they have and that's their time and their attention. So for people to give that to you, it better be worth it. And you don't wanna be known as a channel that just uploads a video for the sake of uploading a video and there's nothing really there of value uh, you can kind of get that feeling when you watch a video that's uninspired like that. So if you're not feeling it for that week, don't feel the need to just upload a video for the sake of uploading one. Make sure it's always your best work, something that you're proud of, something that you can look back in five years and say, man, that was a great video. Other people will notice that too. And then all of a sudden when they think of your channel, they'll think, oh, this is going to be good. When they see a new upload, they're going to watch it. Hope this was helpful to you. Clear skies, everyone. I want to say a huge thank you to all the YouTubers who weighed in and gave advice and collaborated with me on this video. I'm really sorry it took so long to get out. I kind of decided to move house at the very same time I was making videos. Whoops. Now, if you decide to go ahead with your own YouTube channel, and I think you should, I hope this video has helped. Just go into it with an open mind. We all have our own take on it. We all have our own editing styles, our own video filming styles, our own personalities. We are all unique. So go ahead, go out there, start creating, enjoy it, share your channel down below, share your videos down below, and let's keep the conversation going in the comments down below. And with that, thank you very much for watching. Again, thanks to all the YouTubers who helped me on this video. Until next time, clear skies, keep looking up and keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you later.